G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, I am going to be taking a look at each of the 18 clubs in the AFL and looking at who is their most valuable player for the season 2021. Now, most valuable player is kind of a nuanced concept, I guess. I mean, it's not really necessarily that club's best player. I've kind of taken into account a combination of, A, who is their best player, and B, also who's in the, the hot form right at the moment. I've kind of taken that into account. And of course, if a player is injured at the moment, or at least injured for most of the 2021 season, haven't really included them in this analysis. It's not a particularly straightforward thing to do because you've got to look at each club and think which player, if they go down, would be the most damaging to that team's credentials for 2021. So for instance, if a team has a really strong midfield, maybe their best midfielder isn't their MVP. Maybe if they've got a fragile backline, their tall defender is, for instance. So like I said, I'm going to go through the 18 teams alphabetically and try and nominate which player I think is the most valuable for that club in 2021. Before I get into it though, make sure you do go check out my good friend Drew's YouTube channel. I've just started in a goal kicking challenge, made the debut, first time I've kicked a footy in about six years I reckon. We go up against uh, Perth content giants Jamo and Dylan from the Jamo and Dylan podcast at Curtin. I uh, had a great day and it was a ripping vid, so go check that out. But without further ado, let's get into the video. First off with the Adelaide Crows, I'm gonna have to nominate a clear choice in Taylor Walker. And Walker's a funny one because, you know, clearly no one would have really said he was their best player going into this season, but I think the form he's shown so far in the opening four rounds, kicking 20 goals and also just looking in well and truly common form. And to be honest, I think he's polled quite a few Brownlow votes, to be honest, if I had to guess. He's a real on-field leader at the club. He's showing a lot of confidence and just the prodigious talent he's got for goal kicking has really set him apart this year. When he marks the ball at 55, 60 meters out from a set shot, he's a very reliable kick, arguably the best set shot in the game at the moment. And a real big barometer, I think if he misses half the kicks, that he's kicked, Adelaide aren't looking so crash hot at the moment. So I think if they're gonna make a finals push, which is possible, he is gonna be pretty much their MVP. Next up for the Brisbane Lions, I have gone with Harris Andrews. Now again, it's probably open to interpretation. Who is their best player? I think I'd probably say Lockie Neal in terms of overall talent, maybe still has him shaded, but I do think the fact that he's a tall key defender makes him a little bit harder to replace if he suddenly goes down. Brisbane look a little bit more exposed down back. Whereas if Lockie Neal, who's currently not in great form, isn't playing up to his standards or, you know, is in the team. I think Brisbane midfield can cope a little bit more. So Harris Andrews, a quite possibly a top 10, 15 player in the competition, depending on who you ask. And I think for Brisbane, he's their most valuable player this year. Next up, we have Carlton. And this one is quite a tough one to pick. You'd think Paddy Cripps is their clear best player. And ultimately, that's who I've gone with as their most valuable player. Because in terms of pure talent and game-breaking ability, Paddy Cripps stands head and shoulders over the rest of the Carlton list. Yes, you can look at someone like Weedering as well, who won the best and fairest last year. And I know Paddy Cripps isn't in amazing form, despite you know playing pretty well in round three. Round four, he had 21 touches and nine tackles, which is solid. But ultimately, I think if Carlton are going to make a realistic push for finals, Paddy Cripps is the key. Next up, we've got Collingwood, a team that isn't it doing so hot right now, although they do record this before they play the Eagles in Perth, so I'm hoping that is still relevant by the time this comes out. Again, up for debate who Collingwood's best player is. I've made a video at the start of the year saying it's Scott Pendlebury, but I think in this video, I'm going to nominate Darcy Moore as their most valuable player. He's probably a lock for one of the key position All-Australian positions so far this season. He's a lovely rebounding tall defender, super athletic. Yes, there's been a little bit of criticism on how well his man does against Against him, but there's been games where his man's played really well and he's been one of the best on ground as well. Similar to Harris Andrews at Brisbane, I think Darcy Moore is probably the most important purely because of the importance of the position he plays. Now, Essendon is a little bit harder for me. I don't think there is a clear, absolute best player at Essendon. I want to say Michael Hurley probably, but because of the nature of him being injured for however long this season. I've gone with Zach Merritt, who is a prodigiously consistent midfielder. He averages 30 touches a game and 454 meters gain, which is elite for a player in his position. And he really leads the midfield every week. Andrew McGrath is another one who's really stepped up for them in recent weeks. Jordan Ridley was their best and fairest last year, and they're both decent shouts for this role. But I'll stick with my call of Zach Merritt, probably being the most valuable player at Essendon. Fremantle, this one is a little bit more cut and dried. Nat Fife is one of the best players in the competition. He's head and shoulders above the rest at Fremantle as well. And again, probably not in career top-notch form, although that is a very high bar. He had 31 touches on the weekend, kicked six behinds. If that was four goals, we'd be talking about as a all-time performance from Nat Fife. So Fife missed against Carlton. They got blown out of the water. He returns to the side and they do look a lot better, albeit against Hawthorne at home. You could argue their best players this year have been David Mundy and Andrew Brayshaw, but I think over the stretch, I think Nat Fife is their most valuable player. Next up, we've got Geelong and surprise, surprise, I'm going with arguably their 
best player, Tom Hawkins as their most valuable player in 2021. Had a career best year in 2020. Arguably could have won the MVP based on the performances he had that year. Won the Coleman fairly well. Without really glancing at the stats, he's not having quite the same impact in 2021. And Geelong at the moment are looking pretty flat and mediocre. But it is a long season. And I do think if Geelong is going to find their form again, Tom Hawkins will be a crucial part of that. Next up, we have the Gold Coast Suns. This one, again, there's no real clear answer for me other than someone like Jared Witts, who's kind of the heart and soul of their club. He's a prodigious tap ruckman. He's a leader of the club and super consistent, mature player. But if he's out with an ACL, as he is now, that means we have to pick someone else as their most valuable player this year. Now, they've got a lot of young, bright talent. Someone like a Jack Bowes has really impressed me. But I'm going to say Brandon Ellis is their most valuable player right now as a mature wingman. He's having a very consistent season. He's bobbed up for 26 disposals a game and 429 meters gained a game as well, which are really good numbers. And a team that kind of lacks on-field leaders, as we know, he has stepped up and probably played the role they exactly wanted from him. Now crossing to the other expansion side, GWS, and I'm going to say it should really be Stephen Canelio, their captain, but I actually think Toby Green is GWS's most valuable player right now. Now this is straight off the back of a five-goal performance against the Pies in a game in which they won by five goals, but he's also averaging 3.3 goals a game. He's got a bit of a flog about him. He's a character. I think he lifts the side when he's on, and I think he's capable of even more than he's producing right now. I think if GWS are going to slowly find their way back to their previous form, Toby Green is the main man. Next up is Hawthorne, a side in which we sort of delved into a little bit on the latest True Footy podcast and looking at their list and where the upside is going to come from. To me, a few senior players come to mind as their most important. Jack Gunston's on the sidelines right now, but I do love Luke Bruce. Ben McAvoy is their captain and probably one of their most important players for sure, but I'm going to go and stick with the guts. I think Tom Mitchell probably deserves the role of MVP right now. He's back to his ball winning best this year. He's averaging 34 and a half disposals, four clearances a game and six and a half score involvements as well. So when Hawthorne is scoring, Tom Mitchell is usually a crucial part of that. We saw the drop off that Hawthorne had after Tom Mitchell's Brownlow year and where he broke his leg. They dropped from top four and haven't played final since, but I think he's starting to regain that form. And I think that's a fair call for MVP. Next up, we got the Melbourne Demons, a team with quite a few stars, but I think there's a clear choice here and that's Christian Petrarca. Now we know Petrarca's always been a prodigious talent. He's really broken out in 2020, which saw him win equal second in the Brownlow. But this year, he's really backed it up. He's averaging 30 disposals, five and a half clearances, 8.5 score involvements himself, but he's also kicking 1.3 goals a game himself. So he's hitting the scoreboard. To be honest, I think this is a cut and dry answer. Christian Petrarca would be an MVP at almost any other club in the AFL right now. Next up, we have Port Adelaide and I'm going to go with the pair's favorite child, Travis Boak. Now again, Port Adelaide are a very good side with a lot of different contributors. So it's not an absolutely clear choice who their MVP is. You could go with someone like a Charlie Dixon because of what value he adds to the side. I think Zachy Butters is a huge loss to them, but Travis Boak is just so reliable. Again, another player who finished second in the Brownlow last year, and he seems to be getting better with age. He's averaging 28 disposals, seven clearances, and 7.3 score involvements this year. And he was also crucial in their win over Richmond last weekend with a few late desperate acts. Again, Port Adelaide is such a good team. If Boak comes out of the side, they're still so dangerous around the ground. But if I had to nominate one player, I'm saying Travi Boak. Next up, we have Richmond, and surprise, surprise, I'm saying Dustin Martin. We saw the impact on Richmond that Sydney were able to affect by shutting Dusty out of the game. I believe it was his first game without a scoring shot since before their first flag. Look, I am coming up with that stat off the top of my head. I definitely read it somewhere, but if I got it wrong, correct me. And either way, I think it's indisputable. Dusty Martin is the player to shut down at Richmond. He's a big game player, doesn't play a bad game in the finals as evidenced by his three Norm Smiths. And if I'm an opposition team, the first player I'd want to shut down is Dustin Martin. Next up, we have St Kilda. And again, a team with a lot of even contributors, but I think the clear choice here is Jack Steele in the midfield. Field. Again, another player who really shot to prominence last year, I think, winning his first All-Australian jumper, but he's backed it up with a really good first month of footy for St Kilda. He shows a really good balance to his midfield game. He's had 28 disposals a game, 14 of them contested on average, but he also averages 400 metres gain per game as well, which is great for a player of his type. On top of that, he averages six clearances and six score involvements a game, and it was evidenced on the weekend against West Coast how important he is to that side. Next up, we have Sydney, and again, based on the first month of football so far, it's hard to really isolate one player as driving it. They've got a lot of young guns rising to the plate so far and offering lots of even contributions around the ground. Look, I want to say Buddy Franklin, but I actually don't think he's as crucial to them as he once was. This is perfectly evidenced by the fact that he didn't even get on the plane to Melbourne to place Richmond and they still won the game convincingly. 
the way I see it, Buddy Franklin's definitely the best player, but he's more of a bonus option at the moment for them rather than being a central cog in their team. So I'm going to nominate Luke Parker in the midfield. The Swans obviously have a lot of young raw talent across the ground, but particularly in the midfield as well. So I think the experience and stability that Luke Parker offers them is super important. Because he was so good at such a young age, I think people forget that he's not actually that old. I think he turns 29 this year, but he's averaging 27 disposals, 12 of them contested, four and a half clearances a game and eight score involvements, which is great for a midfielder. Again, Sydney have so many even contributors that there's no real clear choice, but I think Luke Parker is a worthy nomination. Next up, we have the West Coast Eagles and following on from a video I made last week about Nick Nat Nui, I'm going to reinforce that I think he's the Eagles' most valuable player. Now look, is he West Coast's best player? I think probably on form he currently is, but you could also throw a few names in there. Both key forwards, Kennedy and Darling are in there. McGovern's a star of the competition. I also think Elliot Yo is underrated across the league in terms of what he offers the Eagles, and he'd probably be very close to my number one if he was fit right now. But as I've said in previous videos, the weakness of the Eagles midfield, their inability to win the contested ball, I think they really rely on the prodigious ruck talent of Nick Natanui, and he's doing it on a consistent basis now. He didn't have the game that he wanted against the Saints, and they were really able to run over the top of us. It was his dominance against the Dogs in round two that nearly won us the game when we probably didn't deserve to be that close. I think you all know my position on Nick Natanui, and if you want to hear more, definitely go check out the video I made last week. Finally, we've got the Western Bulldogs, and again, a team with several contributors, particularly in that midfield. But I'm going to go again with arguably the MVP of the whole competition, Marcus Bontempelli. Now with Bont, I don't know if stats are really going to tell the full story. He only averages 24 disposals, which doesn't sound a lot, but he is also a player that plays forward quite a lot and impacts the scoreboard. He averages 540 meters gained per game, eight score involvements, and six inside 50s, which really shows that he's getting his ball in damaging parts of the ground. For a player that wins plenty of his own ball as well, his kicking efficiency of nearly 73% is really good as well. Not to be confused with disposal efficiency. You take out handballs, 73% on his foot is very good. He's also good for a goal a game. He can swing forward, and I think that's what makes him more valuable than their other midfielders. He's probably the best forward out of all of those. Again, Bontempelli is a player I've been outspoken about. I think he's a wonderful player and could be the best player in the competition by season's end. But that's it, guys. That is who I had for the 18 clubs in the AFL. Let me know who on your team or another team you think I got wrong and who you would nominate instead. It's kind of a fun exercise to think who is the most valuable player to their team in the competition. I'm probably going to go with the boring answer and say Dusty, but I think Christian Petrarca is also there for Melbourne as well. Jack Steele for the Saints, Tom Hawkins for the Cats, Nick Natanui for the Eagles are also good nominations. Again, not necessarily saying these are the best players in the comp, but in terms of how much their team need them to perform, I think all those players are good nominations. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new, and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.